Hello everyone, welcome back to our fourth weekly video regarding field of geography unit 2. Again, in this unit we're going to study more the concept of human geography. We're going to study the fields of categories and we're going to compare and contrast um, a lot of concepts in regard to the field of geography. And now in regard to human geography and hydrosphere, we're going to explore the impact of human geography on societies. And we're going to analyze the impact of studying phenomena's availability on human activities. So, and then we're going to move on to a question that leads us to a differentiated task. So, what is uh, the hydrosphere and how does it actually fit into the Earth's overall system? So, we're going to be having a, a task in which we create a poster or a PowerPoint presentation, clarifying the definition of the word hydrosphere, the three major characteristics about the field itself. In regard to its significance to the field of physical geography, and we're going to move on to some uh, to listing some various examples of the field itself, coupled with a visual representation. Now we're going to have a lot of questions to uh, answer. So, what is human geography, and how does action differ from physical geography? Now, we're going to compare and contrast a lot of basically concepts to each others. What are the implications of globalization on human geography, including uh, the movement of goods, information, and people across borders? And as a follow up question for the next lesson, we're going to move on to types of innovative resources and tools that we use nowadays. That is actually the GIS, and what does it stand for? Now, in terms of geomorphology and climatology, we're going to explore the definition of both basically concepts. We're going to differentiate the study of both uh, fields, and we're going to mind map the subcategories of each and every field individually. Now, along the way, we're going to answer questions that are related to such fields. So, what are the primary factors that influence climate and weather patterns on Earth? How can geomorphology and climatology differ? And what are the key geological processes and landforms that basically geomorphology investigates and how do they relate to Earth's surface? Um, as a continuation, we're going to be creating uh, a PPT by finding the difference among um, a lot of fields, the scope and focus, time scale, uh, the, you know, the fields that are studied, subcategories, environmental impacts, and global perspectives at the end. Don't forget they'll be having a formative assessment at the end of the lesson uh, or at the end of the week itself in which we analyze first of all and reflect upon the essential knowledge that we have and required in the assigned basically unit. Uh, we're going to assign the pages, we're going to assign the project that we'll be working on, and we're going to discuss the criteria in regard to citation. We're going to examine the different essential uh, basically requirements in each and every criteria and how can we basically achieve our best in the project or the formative task itself or assessment. Uh, we're going to highlight the research um, basically project again in details in our next videos. Um, and at the end we're going to ask a lot of questions that are what are the key steps involved in the research process while you're researching for your formative assessment or what you're investigating and um, you know from formulating a hypothesis to drawing a conclusion and don't forget that we'll be using a lot of graphs when it comes to human geography as we're going to determine uh, the limitations and potentials that we have in the graphs data uh, or presentation we're going to study and again highlight the human geography and how does it actually differ from physical geography in that you know kind of week and we're going to learn more about the environmental challenges associated with human geography whether it be the changes that are um that basically um happen on different resources pollution itself um, and uh, we're going to move on to implications of globalizations on human geography including the movement of goods information and people across borders so we're going to link all of these basically parts to human and at the same time to physical geography in regard to a lot of case studies in graphs.